Good morning and welcome to Unity Church on the Mountain from my home. The title of the talk today will be The One Field. But before I begin that, let's start by affirming together our opening statement. There is only one presence and one power in my life and the universe, God. I invite you to take a holy breath with me, breathing deeply in, holding it for a short time, and then releasing through the mouth. So breathing in through the nose, time. Let us affirm together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So, the one field. If you read the, the last newsletter, you know a little bit about what I mean when I say the one field. In science, we've come to know that there is no such thing as matter. That matter, that material stuff that we thought was all around us, is really a consequence of our ability to sense. In other words, it's a consequence of living in this body. What all of this stuff we thought was matter truly is, is energy. Einstein, in his special theory of relativity, gave us the relationship between the mass of what we thought of as matter and the energy that makes up that condensed stuff that we are in the habit of, ref of referring to as matter. And that's that very famous equation that he's known for, E equals mc squared. The energy is equal to the mass of the matter times the speed of light multiplied by itself. And that's a very large number. There is so much more energy contained in what we thought of as matter than its mass or its proportional to its weight. So all of this that we look out at, everything that we see, the things that we don't see, it's really energy. And that energy is existing in different concentrations. If we think about outer space, what we call of is space. There is energy out there, but it's not concentrated as much as it is in the atmosphere, where you have these atoms and molecules of air that are moving around with the wind. This air, 
Think of our holy breath, that air that unites us as we breathe in and out, that connection. So as we travel further, closer to the earth, we we begin to experience a greater and greater concentration of energy. There are what appear to be separate things where the energy is concentrated in a localized place. And we perceive these concentrations of energy as matter. We perceive them as separate things. But if you look at what energy is, Energy is a vibration. Energy is a wave. Think about the river. We're going to use the river instead of the ocean. And on the river, there's these lakes. And you can see on a lake when it's very calm, this smooth, still surface. And as soon as the wind blows or you throw a pebble into the lake, waves begin to propagate out from the pebbles area of of contact with the lake. As the wind blows, these waves are generated. So a wave, a wave is an up and then a down, and then it reaches the bottom, and it goes up again till it reaches the peak and down. And this process repeats. And that's what energy is doing. We have this flow of these waves that are moving throughout the universe. It's these waves that carry the signal that our cell phone picks up. Waves of energy on different frequencies. They make up not only the cell phone service, but our television and our radio. These are devices that have been designed to tune in to certain frequencies of energy waves. And these energy waves carry an information signal on them. And that's what we hear. If you were to look at a record album very close, I don't mean a CD, I'm talking about the the vinyl record albums. They're analog as opposed to a CD which is digital. So if you look with a magnifying glass straight down at the groove, the groove on a on a record starts at the outside and begins to move in, in a spiral. And it looks like they're just big circles, but at a very closer level, there is actually a back and forth. So there is a wave form that has been, we'll say etched, but really it's more like molded. It's pressed into this vinyl. And when that needle goes through that groove, it it vibrates back and forth. And it sends this pulse back through the record player, and we end up hearing it as this signal, which is another pulse. It's another wave. The sound is a wave that is moving through the air. And our ears are tuned to hear sound at certain frequencies. When the sound is really low frequency, that means the waves are are spread out. It is beyond our hearing capacity. You can think of it more as a vibration in the earth or a, a concussion that your body might feel, but your ear won't hear these very long, low frequency waves. If you take a fast, high-frequency wave, then they're going up and down so fast. A dog can hear them. That's why that dog whistle is audible to the dog, but not to us. We're not tuned to pick it up. 
So you have all of these waves that are out there, these waves that propagate through the air, these waves that, that propagate through the what we call electromagnetism. That's the radio waves, the television waves, the cell phone. There is another another waveform that encompasses all of these. And it is the waveform that travels through what Charles Fillmore calls substance. This is, this is the stuff that is behind all the other stuff. This is the energy that is behind all other energy. If you keep looking back as, as science begins to look further and further in a smaller and smaller, more refined views, and as science begins to look broader and broader out into the cosmos, we begin to see this substance. The substance that is back of all manifestation. This substance is source. It's a direct, I, I really don't want to use the word emanation, but it's, let's say, propagation. Um, and that's really not doing it justice either. Because source is not just in some place that's far from us. That's why I hesitate to use these words emigation, uh, emanation and propagation because source is right here with us. This substance. You know, there's that verse in whom we live and move and have our being. This is that substance and this is also source. This is what has been called God. Jacob Bohem, who was a German uh, mystical teacher. He was really a shoemaker, and I love that about him. Because he wasn't educated in theology, and that's probably why he was able to, to have this direct experience and, and receive his guidance directly from spirit within. This intuitive knowing. He called it Grund. Das Grund. And it is what it sounds like. It's the ground. It is that which is behind everything else. It's the firm basis upon which everything stands. This, this collective, is what I'm calling the one field. And it contains all of the vibrations on all of the frequencies in all of the different Forms that can propagate these vibrations. From the water to the air to, to, to the electromagnetic frequencies. And to those frequencies that science is only just now. Frequencies isn't the right word. The substratum, the substrate. You know, the, the, the media that the wave travels through. That what Charles Fillmore called substance and Jacob Bohem called das Grund. So what does that mean for me? How does that help me in my spiritual growth. What can I take from this lesson that I can put to use in my daily life? So it is a background. It's a way of, of seeing through the eyes of science that connection that is between everything Oneness, 
Oneness is not an airy fairy out there castle in the sky idea. It is observable and we can see it and we see its manifestations all the time. Everything that we see and experience is, is the expressing end of the process of this vibration of substance. We begin with the way that Charles Fillmore expressed the Trinity, the divine order. So it begins with the Father, divine mind, the Son, the idea, and the expression, the created world. So we have this source, we have this perfect potential that we call the Christ, and we have all the myriad expressions of source in our world of experience. And that still doesn't tell me a practical exercise, but it helps me to grasp this idea of oneness. It helps me to see the world in a different way. And that is practical. How I see the world is my choice. It is a result of my experience. When I begin to practice putting to use the spiritual tools that we have, we begin to see that they work, that, that, that this isn't just something that's made up. You see, that's practical Christianity that unity teaches. is not listen to the teacher in front of you who is speaking words and believe what they say. That's not what practical Christianity is. Practical Christianity is where we take these tools that the teacher is trying to help us to see how to use and we put them into, into practice. And I like the word play. We play with them. Some call it we work with them. But I like the spirit of play because it allows me to, to fall off the horse and get back up without self-condemnation. You see, if there is no self-condemnation, there's not even anything to forgive. And that's what grace is. There is not anything that even needs to be forgiven. That is big love, unconditional love. So we begin to see the world in a different way. We begin to experience what we thought of as other, as being ourself. We begin to see the connection. It takes practice. That's why we have that devotional time that we spend some time in each day. Preferably in the morning, because it sets the tone that we can bring into every experience that follows through the day. Now, if you're on night shift, obviously, it wouldn't be in the morning, but I used to call my morning when it started to get dark, because I worked night shift. But the point is, at the beginning of the day, we set that tone with our devotional practice. I like to use the structure of affirmative prayer and extend that over about a half an hour. But you don't have to start with a half an hour. Start with whatever time is comfortable for you, and that might be five minutes. 
But I think you're going to find when you start spending those five minutes that you begin to want to give spirit more and more. And it will grow. So after that, we go into the day and we take our spirit breaks. These are time that we, times, smaller periods of time that we give to spirit through the day. It helps us to remember this connection. It helps us bring our awareness back to the center, back to the truth of who we are. We remember that one field that each breath that we take is a connection with every other being in this universe. In the Aramaic, when you look at a translation of the word that's normally translated as God or Lord, a better translation is sacred unity. And that is this one field. I want to talk very briefly about an idea that I'll be exploring in the different, in the different talks that are coming. And that's the idea of trauma. I've been listening to a teacher on, on YouTube by the name of Thomas Hubel, H-U-B-L. And he talks about the idea of trauma. When a traumatic event happens in our life, we have protective mechanisms that are built into us, into the way that we work as human beings. We all share it. I can't speak to my doggy, but he probably has a similar mechanism. And when this happens, we must defend ourselves. We have to continue to live. And so this is a reaction that takes place. And it's automatic. We begin to wall it off. We begin to build the shield around the traumatic event and it becomes this solid, like a rock, concentration of energy inside of us. If we look at the larger scale, the scale of groups of people, the same thing goes on. Remember the one field. Unity teaches that everything is thought. That's that substance. And so in the same way, this happens inside our body and our consciousness, our neuro field. It happens in the larger field of humanity. When there is a group shared traumatic event. Let's look at the obvious one. It's going on right now. And that's the COVID, the COVID-19 experience. And it's not, it's not isolated to one group of people. But remember there, that we're all people. But we do separate ourselves into these groups nations, cultures, even races, even though in reality we are all one. But there's this idea of a trauma. Okay, let's go back to the trauma. This concentration becomes sort of a block. And it's a survival mechanism because we can't deal with that right now. We have to live. Think of it like Remember the, the, the one field being like the river that's flowing. And then, okay, what happens when there's a rock right there in the middle of the river? It becomes a block and the river just flows around it. Okay, but hap what happens to a rock, though, that is constantly in this stream of water? The water very slowly begins to chip away at the rock. 
rounding it off, and eventually the rock is nothing but sand. Now, as we chip away at that rock, the trauma that that rock is protecting, or that protecting us from, begins to express in our lives. This is, this is what psychology calls the shadow. We've talked about this before. The shadow. And, 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 and I want to remind you this. If we think we have finished, then we are finished. Even if we haven't dealt fully with whatever it is that that is in our spiritual growth at the moment. As soon as we think we're finished, our growth is stopped. So I encourage an open-minded approach because we are not finished. The, the greatest evidence that we're not finished is that we're still here in these bodies. <laughs> okay, we're not finished. So we, we begin to look at how we can experience this shadow. One of the ways that we can experience our own shadow is in our judgments of someone else. When I look out there with judgment saying that they should not have done that, they, that is a bad thing that's going on right there, that is a true key to turn those eyes upon my own consciousness and see how I am expressing that same phenomena in my life, in my own consciousness, without further judgment. You see, that's the idea, the spirit of play. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn those eyes back with that grace that doesn't need forgiveness. It just is what it is. And it is an opportunity for me to grow. I can look out there and see myself. I can look out there and see myself. And I can begin to deal with these traumas of my own. And in another talk, we'll talk about these traumas in greater depth and how to explore breaking them up. And what happens when we break them up. Okay, so we go about our daily life. We travel the path. We pay attention to what's going on around us because spirit, that living breath, is expressing in everything. Everything that happens is opportunity for us to have an experience that helps us along that road to awakening. You may be, have already seen my hand. That was an opportunity. When that cat jumped off the bed, landed on me, I mean, he was terrified and he just, just, just tore the skin open. But it was an opportunity to look at what was going on and at what was going on in my consciousness at the time. You might call it a shock. It was certainly an alarm clock. <laughs> That's one of my favorite spiritual tools is to set little alarm clocks. When things happen, they remind me to check in and become aware of my consciousness, aware of my body state. Where am I holding tension? How am I performing whatever task that it is? 
I had a challenge from Wanda Gale this week to look at when I eat, to be aware, to sit with my plate of food and be aware of eating, be aware of the food. You see, it's been my habit to eat very mechanically. And this was a wonderful exercise. So it might be the right one for you. Or it might be right just to spend that time in the morning in devotion and to take the spirit breaks. Just look within yourself and allow your own discerning mind to take something from this talk, something from your daily experience, and put it to use in your spiritual growth. I'm going to play a song for you. It's called Traveling on My Way. And it really is about this idea of every moment, of every day, being a, a time of prayer. This idea that Paul taught about continuous pray. Pray without ceasing, is it? And it doesn't mean to sit down and never get up. But it means that everything we do becomes a prayer. And that's what I discovered as I was eating that plate of food. When I brought my awareness to what I was eating, there was this, there was this feeling, that, that stillness that came over me. And it was a prayer. So allowing that time to pause. Any time that we find ourselves waiting for something is an opportunity to pause, to take a spirit break. So the song is something that I wrote some time ago, but I don't play it very often. It's called Traveling on Your Way. Keeps turning and going around, but silently hearing the sound in the field. Listen for truth, the truth of the wheel. While you're walking along by the side of the road. Song is the 
Please join me as we affirm together the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love. The power of God protects us. I am the power. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence. Wherever I am, God is and all is well. Thank you.